Welcome to Ion Radio. I'm John. I'm Kat. And today we are starting with the Clone Wars. Begun the Clone War has. So today we're going to be going over the intro game that's in the back of the rule book. Um, one of the reasons why we're starting here is people all the time have been asking us to do like the learn how to play. So we're going to do that in our own way with that setup. So uh, for this particular game, I'm going to take on the clones, the Galactic Republic. John's going to be the separatist. We'll go through some of the different parts of the game, probably through the first and maybe even second activation in terms of how to play, setup, etc. And then go through the rest of the game as we normally would. We should also point out that the fleets that we're using, like John said, are what comes out of the back of the book. And we're surprised actually that they came pretty close. I think uh, the clones are at 388 points and you're 398 or something? Something to that effect. So let's go ahead and jump into the game and see what happens. For the Galactic Republic, we have an Acclimator 2. It's an assault ship with Obi-Wan Kenobi. We have an Acclimator 1 with assault concussion missiles. This is my personal favorite upgrade for ordnance. A Counselor class Charger C-70 with a clone navigation officer. I have two Counselor class armed cruisers, both with Auxiliary Shields team. And for squadrons, I have six V-19 Torrents and a V-19 Torrent with Axe. Some total 388 points. Let's take a look at the Separatist fleet. So to start off, we have a Munificent class Star Frigate. On it is my commander, Count Dooku. The second ship I have is a Munificent class Comms Frigate. And because it's a Comms Frigate, there's a Hyperwave Signal Boost on it. I have a Hard Cell Battle Refit that has the Beast of Burden title. And then two Hard Cell Transports. Both of them have Munition Resupply on it. I have for fighters the Hard Shawl Prototypes. That is my Ace. And then I have six Vulture-class droid fighter squadrons in addition to that. My fleet comes in at 398. So let's talk about objectives. So normally, in a full 400-point game, the player that has less points in the build out of the 400 is considered to have a higher bid. So in this case, I have a two-point bid because the Separatists come in at 300 and. 98 and Ken with the Republic comes in at 388 for a 12 point bid. Because of this, he can choose to be first or second player. For this example game, he has chosen to be first player and then he has to choose from my three objective cards. Each fleet is built with three objective cards, red, assault, yellow, defense, and blue, navigation. The first player then will choose one of the three objective cards from the second player's fleet. For this game, we're going to be playing Advanced Gunnery. Each objective card comes with setup instructions and special rules for scoring and different things for that. So for this game, after deploying fleets, each player chooses one of their ships to be an objective ship, starting with the first player. Special rule. The first player's objective ship may perform each of its attacks from the same hull zone. It cannot target the same hull zone or squadron more than once each round with that hull zone. The second player's objective ship may perform each of its attacks from the same hull zone and it may do so against the same targets. End of game. The fleet point cost of the destroyed objective ship is doubled. Do not double the cost of the upgrade cards. So here we go, this is the start of game. So you can see right now, Ken and I are starting to define the play area. And the normal play area is a three foot by six foot game area. And what we're doing now is we're establishing a three by three setup area. And um, the way this is done is if you take the range ruler from each short edge in, that's about a foot. So if you do that, that is the edge inside of there. And then at distance three from your home edge forward, that area is defined as the deployment area. 
After defining the play area, the next step is to deploy obstacles. A standard game has a station, two debris fields, and three asteroids. These have to be placed within side the setup area and outside of the player's deployment zones. They also have to be placed further than a distance one away from each other. Each obstacle has its own effect. The first one, the station, when a ship lands on it, it may discard a damage card. When a squadron lands on it, it can heal one health. All obstacles obstruct line of sight. In this case, that means when you're gathering your dice pool, you have to remove one dice from that of your choice. Asteroids, when you land on them, will deal one face-up damage card to your ship. This can be very dangerous if you land on them. Debris fields give your ship two damage. This damage can be applied to a shield and it is at the player's discretion which hull zone it goes to, but it both of the damage have to go to the same hull zone. If there's no longer shields, it is just damage cards straight to your ship hull. After the game board is set up with obstacles, begins deployment. Deployment begins with the first player. The first player has to deploy first a ship inside the deployment area. It cannot extend past the distance three from its home edge. And when a player places a ship, he has to decide on what speed the ship is going. The speed can be anywhere between speed one and speed four, depending on the specific ship's speed chart. After a player has placed a ship, they get more options. They can now, instead of deploying another ship, they can deploy two squadron fighters at distance two of the previously deployed ships. When you come down to having an odd number of squadrons left, so in this case one, you have to wait to the end of the deployment. Everything else has to be deployed first before that fighter can be placed down. In this example that you're seeing right now, that is what Ken and I have to do. Deployment continues alternating until all ships and squadrons are put into play. So here is the Galactic Republic setup. Uh, universally across the board with one exception, everything is at speed two. My flagship is now moving at speed three. Speaking of flagship, one of the things we need to do with advanced gunnery ob objective is we pick an objective ship. That's going to be uh, Obi-Wan's ship over here, my flagship. Couple things of note. I set myself up initially because I was first player, kind of in the center more or less to figure out what John was going to do and as he started deploying I created a couple items in terms of where I was positioning my ships and my squadrons. My hope right now is to get my squadrons to engage in the center of the table, and since he's got more on my right flank, hoping to sweep in and take out some of his smaller ships with what I have. Here is my deployment. I have these two are my hard cell transports with munition resupply, and they are going speed two. I have Dooku here, who I have marked as my objective ship for the advanced gunnery. And he is on the Star Frigate going speed two. This is my comms frigate munificent class with the hyperwave signal boost going speed two. And then tucked right over here is the Beast of Burden title on a hard cell battle refit. I have squadrons, and then this right here is my ace. My idea was really just center deploy and then fill out one side to sweep in. We'll see how well that goes. Also of note right now is that there are new rules that have come out with if there's a different amount of ships, um, there's pass tokens because Ken and I both have the same amount of objectives that does not come into play. But the way it works is let's say Ken had three ships to my five as first player he would get the difference minus one. 
So in this case, he would get one pass token, which is a single time use throughout the game. If he chose to be second player, my five to his three, he would get two. So that's the way that works. Now that we're done deploying, let's discuss quickly the command phase. The command phase is the first stage of each game round. In this stage, each player is at the same time assigned face down command dials to their ships, placing them at the bottom of the command dial stack. Each ship must have a total number of command dials assigned to it equal to its command value. Here we see my munificent flagship. It has a command value of two, so I'm going to be assigning it two command dials stacked. The one that's on top will be what's on the first turn and the one under it will be the second turn. So my first activation is going to be my armed cruiser. I'm gonna reveal my dial. I have an engineering command. We're gonna pause here real fast to go over commands. Commands can either be the command dial or the command token. There are four types of commands. The commands are navigate, Squadron, Repair, and Concentrate Fire. Navigation takes place during the Execute Maneuver step of your ship phase. If you use it as a dial, you can change your speed by one up or down, or you can temporarily increase one yaw value by one. If you use it as a token, change your speed by one up or down. Squadron. Activate a number of squadrons at close medium range equal to your squadron value. Those squadrons can move and attack. If you use Squadron Token, activate one squadron. Repair. Gain engineering points equal to your engineering value to spend these effects. For one point, move one shield to another hall zone. Two points, recover one shield. Three points, discard one damage card. A token gains and spends engineering points equal to half of your engineering value. Concentrate Fire. Concentrate Fire Dial adds one attack dice of any color that is already in your attack pool, and as a token, you may reroll one attack dice. Each command can only be resolved once per turn, so if you have um, a dial and a token of the same type, they must be used together. I'm going to use it as a dial. One of the upgrades I have here is the Auxiliary Shields team. That allows me to add a shield, so I'm going to spend my two engineering points and add an extra shield on the right hand side. I have nothing to shoot at, so I'm going to move my ship. Let's pause for a second and talk about movement. Movement is done by what speed your ship is currently moving. So you look at what your speed dial is, and you can then look at your speed chart on your ship. That will determine how maneuverable your ship is at that speed. Each slash in the corresponding joint allows you to do one click of maneuvering in either direction. When you've decided how your ship is going to move, you lock it into the base with the maneuver tool. When you're determining your course, just remember that your ship cannot land on top of the maneuver tool. So I put one notch on both the first and second joints of the maneuver tool. And we're going to move speed two. Oops. Cheating already. My first activation is going to be this hard cell transport right here. I'm revealing the navigate. I'm going to be taking it as a token. So now I have a navigate token. And I'm going to be using the munition resupply. I have at range five both of my munificence. So after you reveal a command dial step, you may exhaust this card and discard that many tokens from it and choose that many friendly ships at distance one to five, assign each a concentrate fire. So I'm giving both of my munificence a concentrate fire, leaving my munition resupply with three tokens on it in the exhausted state that will require it to be readied. And then we're going to go ahead and move our speed to. Ooh, 
my next activation, I'm going to activate the C70 charger. I have a navigate dial. When I reveal that, I can use the clone navigation officer to exhaust him. And then because I have a revealed token, a ship within range 5, this acclimator is, can gain that command as a token. So with that particular dial, I'm actually going to take it as a token. So I essentially gave myself two tokens. And I have no shots, so I'm going to move. And I'm just going to pretty much go forward with a slight bend to the left here. I'm going to now activate my flagship with Dooku. We're revealing a Navigate. We're going to be taking it as a token. So now I have two tokens, which is the maximum amount of tokens that my ship can take. And then we're going to be going at speed two. And we're going to do this maneuver. I'm going to activate my armed cruiser in the back. Uh, again, with the engineering, I'm going to use the dial. That allows me to add again another shield. I'm going to put it on my right side. And of course, because these are brand new, those are tough to move. I'm moving at speed two, so we're going to use one of the shorter range or uh, yeah, the maneuver templates. Always worth getting extra maneuvering templates. is that activation. We're going to activate this hard cell right here and reveal a navigate. And we're going to take it as the token. And then we're going to be moving speed two. I have nothing in range still. Usually the first turn, there is no shots. Maybe we'll do this maneuver. That is not locked in. So we're going to activate the flagship. I have a navigate. I'm going to use the dial. One thing I'm noticing about the acclimators, they move really slow and man, they are not maneuverable. So I have no shots. So I'm going to use the dial. Uh, I'm going speed three. So I've got one on the second and the third joint in terms of yaw value, which will put me all the way up here. Let's go with my second Munificent. It's going to be revealing a Navigate. And we're going to be taking that as a token. And then we're going to be moving speed two. Landing right there. So final activation for me is the Acclimator one. Navigate, because you always should be navigating, especially with these ships. No shots, so I'm going to move my speed two. I have to move this guy. I've marked him already, just so I can get the maneuver tool down. Move up here to speed two. We will replace our fighter. My last ship, Beast of Burden. It is revealing a navigate we're going to be taking it as a token and then we're going to be moving speed two start of the squadron phase during the squadron phase players take turn activating two of their unactivated squadrons at a time starting with the first player during this phase, fighters can either move or attack. They cannot do both as if they were activated with a command. One squadron move, they use the range ruler's distance side and they can move up to the speed that is listed on their card. They are unable to move if they have an enemy squadron that is at distance one of them. When squadrons are at distance one of each other with clear line of sight, meaning not over a ship or a obstacle, they are considered engaged. So for my first series of activations, I'm going to move some of the squadrons in the rear here. And as you'll note, I am 
changing the activation, you get to activate two. So the marker shows as orange. Let's start with these two down here. I can move up to distance four. So I just want to stay outside of flak range. Move these guys to the other side of the debris field. Next two fighters, we're going to move right on top of this asteroid. set of squadrons here. We actually can get the range marker on the board. These next two squadrons are just going to move up with their friends. The final squadron I have is Axe. He can move pretty much all the way up to here, and I'm not even going to move him that far. So we're just going to put him right there, which gives him his bubble effect with those four squadrons. My last squadron, we're going to be moving four onto the station, staying out of engagement range, which is range one. Two, so we're now in the status phase. We're refreshing all of our tokens and cards. I've got one card to refresh that has a cost, so it's the non-recurring cost. I'm going to refresh the clone navigation officer using the token that is on that card. I have nothing that I'm going to choose to refresh at this time, so that is the end of round one, and we will start turn two now. So after we set dials and the command phase, um, Count Dooku spends off one of the navigation tokens from his card, giving each of your ships a ray for the navigation. Give everyone a ray token. What ray means is that you cannot resolve that command associated with it. You can get rid of it by discarding a matching token or you can get rid of all of your raid tokens by discarding a dial. So first activation is going to be the flagship, the Acclimator 2 with Obi-Wan. I have a navigation dial. I'm going to take it as a token. I'm not going to get rid of the raid, so I effectively can't do anything this turn with navigate. Now, on to firing. When to determining what type of dice um, can be used, you use the range ruler. The range ruler has black, red, blue, blue, red, and red. When you lay it out to see what range you're at, determines what type of dice can be used. In this type of attack, only Ken's red dice can be used. Even though he has black and blue, he would have to be at closer range to use it. Because of advanced uh, gunnery, I have the ability to shoot John's hard cell at long range, both on the side and the front. So let's go ahead and start with my shot to the side. So it's three dice. We're at long range. And these are three red dice. Brand new red dice. Brand new red dice. Let's see how they work. Two hits and an accuracy. Now I'm not that familiar with what you have on the accuracy. I have an evade. A uh, redirect and a brace. So I think what I'm going to do is prohibit you from using your redirect actually. Okay, I will spend the evade and cancel out one of those damages, taking one to my side. Second shot. This is going to be to your front. Three red dice again. 
and that's lots of accuracies. So uh, I'm going to say you can use your evade, but I'm blocking the other two. One dot, one damage. It has to be against my front. It has to be against your front. And I just take the damage. So now on to movement. Because I have no way to reduce my speed or rotate, I'm going to do as much as I can. So I have the second joint has one yaw value change. Still moving at speed three. So here we go, avoiding cleverly the debris field. Let's go with this hard cell. This hard cell is revealing a navigate, and we're going to use it as the dial. Dropping our speed and adding an extra click. So we're going to be moving like this. Going to activate this armed cruiser. Nav, we're going to take that as a token. Because once again, I got all these raids and there's another Nav one from Dooku. I have no shots because John cleverly kept his squadrons out of my flak range. So staying at speed two. It's me right here. We're going to activate Beast of Burden. It's got a navigate. We're just going to waste the dial because I already have a token and I kind of want to stay at speed two. And then can you find if I hover this? Yep. Looks good to me, Jim. We're going to move right there. We're going to activate the C70 charger. Actually, it's a charger C70. Navigate, we're going to keep it as the dial. When I reveal the dial, we're going to exhaust the Clone Navigator Officer to give the C70 over here a token. I'll show you actually that it's got both a raid and now a token here. I'm going to spend the token on this ship to get rid of the raid token that's there, allowing me to use the command. I do have a couple option, options for shots, but what I'm going to do is make my shot here, so front to front of the hard cell. So we have two dice, however it is obstructed, so we lose one red, it's one red die to the front. Let's see what I get. It's a critical. I will choose to redirect that to the side. So now that I've made my shots, I'm going to use the token here, or the dial, and I'm going to drop down to speed one and slow down. And I'm going to overlap definitely these two guys. You might clip the other one with your dial. I might clip the other one. I did, so. John, you can place those three. Okay, so we're going to activate this hard cell. He's going to reveal a squadron, and we have a squadron value of two, and I can reach out to medium range. So we're going to select these two right here, and we're going to be flying them over to here to attack these squadrons. The first one will move and land him here, engaging both of them. And we start off with a blue and a black. For nothing, and we will put in a black for one damage. And that black you got through the AI. AI. So when you activate with AI, when I use a command, you roll in your initial attack pool, and then you get to choose a dice to add to the attack pool based off of the color that's already in the attack pool. We're gonna now move our second guy over here, and at least now we'll be able to swarm and re-roll this. So we're gonna try to do the same thing. So blue and a black, see what we get. One hit, we're gonna be putting in an additional black for a hit. And then with Swarm, because I have another guy there, we're going to re-roll this black dice. Into a hit. Three damage. So three damage, and there is nothing I can do about that. So this guy goes from four health down to one. Okay. 
then we're going to make an unobstructed shot into your front with, I believe it's just two red dice. Yes, it is. And then we're also going to make this attack to the side of your acclimator at medium range. So we'll start with that one. Medium, side to side. Hit. So let's see. I'm going to take it and salvo. Yep. So we will get one hit here. Mm -hmm. When you salvo, you will use the rear armament to fire back. The rear armament on the acclimator two is a red and a blue die. So I will roll that back at John's hard cell for two crits. Okay, I'm gonna spend my evade completely out and make you re-roll both of them. Okay. When you are a smaller class ship, he is a medium base, I am a small base. When you spend defense tokens, if you discard a defense token, regardless of the state, if it's readied or spent, it will affect the um, a second dice for the evade. So we have a hit and a crit. Okay. And then we're going to brace that to uh, one and redirect it to the rear. As soon as I made that shot, I realized it was a mistake. Now we're going to be firing long range, two dice into the front of your charger. Or a hit. So I'm going to just spend the evade to cancel it because we're at long range, correct? Correct. And then we're going to go ahead and move it. Does seem like it was Ken's turn, but it was actually mine. So let's activate this other armed cruiser. I have a navigate dial, I'm gonna use it. The token that I gave myself earlier, I'll use to get rid of the raid. No shots, so I'm just gonna move. I am gonna slow down to speed one, so I don't crash into my ship. And I'm gonna do that using the navigate dial to drop to speed one. There we go. We're gonna activate this munificence. We're revealing a squadron. I can activate up to three squadrons. So we're gonna activate one, two, and probably three. So first we're going to be moving this guy up to here, and we will attack the guy that I need one damage on. So blue and a black, and then we get to decide. It's dead, but of course, it's going to be the first attack that I hit three hit things on. All right, so there we go. We have one destroyed clone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move this guy over to here. And we're going to attack this other guy. We're going to do the same thing. Blue and a black. And then add in a black. And then we're going to use this for swarm to re-roll the blank into three damage. There's the three damage. So he goes from five to two. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this guy four to land right here. And we're gonna shoot into your front with a red dice. Here we go. An accuracy. What are you going to accuracy? Yeah, definitely going to accuracy your salvo. Okay. So good thing to note, he spent the accuracy on the salvo. Had John not done that, I would have shot back at him with two black dice. And then we get to make my attack. My first attack is going to be against your ship here. It's going to only be two. Red dice. Red dice don't like me. So here we go. 
Those liked me. Wow. A hit and a double. So on um, this particular guy, so I can actually spend out my evade token. And because I'm a larger class, get rid of two dice. Yeah. So that's what you're going to do? That's exactly what we're going to do. Canceling out both of those. Yes. Now my next attack, I'm going to attack from my side to the front of this acclimator. And we're going to be rolling in three red dice. For a double. And we're going to spend this concentrate fire to re-roll one of these. Into three hits. So this is going to my... Front. Front. So I'm going to brace the three to two, and I'm going to redirect to the port side. Now, because I'm spending my redirect token, and it's readied, I can reduce the total damage by one. And so you're only going to so do. I'm actually, one. only going to do one damage, and push that off to the side. So, yes. Okay, and then it's going to come down to movement. And we're going to be moving like this. Overlapping all of my squadrons. Okay, you can place it. Let's get these out of my way for a minute here. Necessarily. Alright, I have to activate the acclimator because that's the last thing I have left. I have a squadron command that I'm going to use. Not going to bother to burn through the raid token. So let's start with a squadron. I have a squadron value of three. So we're going to start with this squadron over here, which is almost dead, and we're going to attack the squadron that it's engaged with. V-19s have a red and two blues as their anti-squadron dice. So let's see what I can do against the Vulture. And I've, well, one. Okay. And then I'm going to activate, I think I'm gonna activate just this generic one over here. Clearly have plenty of opportunity to get in range. I am gonna intentionally stay out. No, you know what, I'm gonna engage both. And I got a reason for that. But I wanna kill him first. So again, same thing, red and two blue. And all accuracies. But you have swarm. I do have swarm. So let's re-roll blue for a hit. So okay, that's... I am now on one health. Yes. So final squadron, I'm going to activate Axe. And I can bring him right up front here. And we're going to wind up plopping him right there. Again, engaged with both. Again, same thing, going for this vulture. Ah, oh, you got him. Yeah, I got him. Now, I've got one shot I can make here. I'm gonna fire from front to front. We are at medium range, but I don't have any blue dice. So I've got three red dice that I'm going to use against the front of your munis munificent. So that's a three hits and an accuracy. And I'm going to say I'm not going to allow you to salvo. Okay. So we're going to brace it to two, and we will redirect two of it over to this side. That's all the shots I can make. So now I'm going to move, and because I'm rated, this is going to... So, before Ken moves, this oh, that's special... Right. This is the Hador Chal prototypes, and it has the special ability before an enemy ship or squadron at distance one moves, you may perform an attack against that ship or squadron even if you are engaged. So I'm gonna bomb the front of your ship. Take one. So what I'm going to do here is, you know, I'm just gonna take the one for the moment. And then I'm gonna move and I'm going to overlap a whole bunch of squadrons. He's going to be overlapped for sure. I might even wind up overlapping your guy. Yeah, I'm going to overlap him too. Yeah. So here I am. So 
let you place those. We're actually going to put this guy over here with the rest of this cluster. Like that. Here we go. Last ship. Count Dooku's ship. Um, which is also the advanced gunnery. It's going to be revealing and engineering. And we're going to be taking it. And we're going to be discarding the nav token to do it. I think an engineering is going to be more valuable moving down. Now, we're going to make... Two attacks. Now, I can attack from the same hull zone of mine into the same hull zone because I'm the second player for advanced gunnery. And we're going to be shooting your front twice at medium range with two blues and two reds. So here's the first attack. And we're going to uh, leave it as is. All right, so for that three We're going to redirect to the left side, and I'm going to salvo back. So because, again, I'm redirecting, the sum total goes down by one, so we have three goes to two. So that eliminates the shield over here. And that's using Obi-Wan's ability. That's using Obi-Wan's ability, correct. And now I get to salvo back one red, which does not get in the tray. That one does, so you get a crit. I will redirect it to my side. Now let's make the second attack. The second attack will be the same thing into the same location. It's going to be two blues and two reds. And we're going to target your brace. Yeah. And you're going to take four. So since I'm taking four and I can't use the brace, I have to get rid of the redirect and push that to the right side. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, leaving one shield on the front. Sounds good. Then we're going to go ahead and move. And we're going to move just like this, staying at speed two. So for the squadron phase, I get to start with my two. I'm going to activate this squadron first, and he's going to jump up. I want to stay out of range of your vulture, so he's going to go to about here, but not quite all the way. This guy, on the other hand, is within range one of the side of your hard cell, so he's going to make a bomb attack into the side of your hard cell. So. The V-19s roll black dice, and I miss, and I can't swarm against squad, uh, against ships. That'd be cool, though. My fighters just can move, so they're going to slide themselves over to here, so I can be in range of that ship. I wonder why they need what? to be in range Why, of why that would they ship? need to be in range of this ship? Stay tuned next time. So I have one squadron left. This guy over here, I can move almost all the way up to you, but all I need to do is just engage this squadron over here. And that should be more than sufficiently close, yeah. Okay, that is the end of round two. We're gonna go into the um, status. status phase and refreshing everything. Start of turn three, Count Dooku is going to spend a squadron, and he's going to raid all of your things for squadrons. I'll pass them out for you. Oh, I appreciate that. Boop. Thank you so much. Boop. 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 And boop. So my first activation is going to be the acclimator that's about to die. Navigate. So I'm going to keep that as a dial. I'm going to spend the token I have for navigate to get rid of the raid token you gave me earlier. So I'll still have squadrons as a raid here. I have a couple shots. I can fire from my side to the front of your munificent here, 
and then from the front to the front of the munificent over here. So let's start with my side to your front on this guy over here, two reds and a black. And I'm kind of hoping that one of these allow me, me to use assault concussion missiles. That one does not, but that's three hits into your side. Oh, or your front. Into my front. So we're going to brace it, and we're also going to salvo back into that empty space. Yes, you are. So that two is reds. two reds right back at you for a double. So with that double, I'm going to brace that to one, and then I just take one hit, correct? Correct. Let's fire the front to front of the other Munificent. So three reds and two blacks. Again, hoping for some crits on the black dice. I don't like these black dice. Uh, all right, so that's three, five, and I've got no way to reroll anything. Five. So we will brace it to three. We will redirect it. And I should use the right tokens. So we'll brace it, redirect it, and salvo you. Okay. So we will brace it to three. Three. And we will put one to this side, dropping it to zero, and then two to the front. And then we're going to salvo you with two reds into your front. For nothing. Wow. You, you're welcome to do that. So now I get to move. Before you move, I'm going to shoot you into get, your side. You do get to shoot at me, yes. Look at that. This thing has now gotten three attacks off. On, on that one uh, ship. That's great. Double. Double hit. Um, I really don't want to burn that brace because you're going to kill me if I don't. I'm going to actually... Uh, I'm going to take it. So that's two hits on, on that acclimator. So what we're going to do, I'm going to increase to speed three. And I'm going to put yaw on the first, or on the second and the third joint. So we are going to mark a couple things because we're going to have to try and move and get be accurate with this particular movement. If you land, you're gonna overlap both of those, right? I think I might. Can you, is it, if you do, then I don't really care. Yeah, you would. Yeah. So if you can land, you will overlap both. So we can just slide them out of the way. I'm gonna move him just to the other side here. Lots of pans. So this would go here and would potentially overlap. So you know what I'm going to do is put it in there. I think I just made it. I did. Yes, you did. It gets to go back over here. And you do get to put that one squadron back wherever you would like, John. Uh, both of them. Both of them, yes. And both of them are going to rest, I think. There. And the other one can go here as well. And don't forget the squad, or the nav token that fell off your ship. There you go. There we go. We're going to activate my very damaged hard cell. It's going to start off with a squadron. And we're going to grab one of the squadrons that's not engaged and fly him all the way up here to attack the guy that is right there. Locking everyone down, kind of. Mm -hmm. So we'll attack the guy, and we're going to attack with the blue and the black for two hits. Put in a black for another hit. So three damage. I'm going to just let him die. Yes. And I don't think I'm going to activate anyone else at this time. Then we'll do ship's attack. I have medium range into the side of your ship here. Mm -hmm. And I have 
medium range to here, and then I have this attack here. What we're going to do is we're going to shoot from here into the front mm -hmm. of your ship with two reds and a blue. All right. For three damage. Three damage. So I'm going to... With the crit. Redirect that, and that will wind up going to my port side. Because it's a fresh token, Obi-Wan reduces the damage by one. So that's two. And those go over here, unless you have a special crit, and I don't think you do. I do not. And so no I'm, shield on the port side. I'm not going to attack. And we're going to be doing this maneuver. I'm going to ram you. And then I'm going to fall back and do the one maneuver, and we'll see if I can land. Got it pinned. Two. Nope. So we ram. I stay where I'm at. And we each take a damage card. I'm going to do the other acclimator. I have a navigate dial. We're going to use it. And just so you guys can see the raid tokens, I have a squadron and a navigate raid. And I have a squadron, or a navigate token. We're going to spend the navigate token to get rid of that raid, keeping the dial. I now have a couple shots. Because of advanced gunnery, I'm at long range, and I can hit both the rear and the side of the hard cell. So I'm going to make two shots. We're going to start with the side that has no shields. So two red dice. Let's see what I get. Four two crits. Okay. I will brace it and take a crit. The critical is damage controls. When you overlap a ship or an obstacle, deal one face down damage card to the ship in addition to other effects. Mm, too bad I didn't have that earlier. Correct. So now I'm going to fire from the side to your rear where you have ash shield. For a nothing and a cheese. And a crit. So you still you get a crit which will be hit by the shield, right? Correct. So now let's use the navigate dial. I'm going to drop to speed 2 and put an extra yaw on the second joint. Here I go. Right in there, John. Am I locked in? You are locked. Awesome. There we go. Back to you. Okay, we're going to activate Beast of Burden. When you activate, you may exhaust this card and spend one or more defense tokens to choose up to that many defense tokens on friendly ships at distance one to three and ready those defense tokens. We're going to ready all three of the tokens of my munificent that's right there by spending mine. Wow. And then we're going to shoot front into your side and then side into your side. So we're going to start with the three red out the front for two damage. So with the two damage. I'm going to go ahead and exhaust the brace out to take one, and I'm also going to spend my salvo. Okay. So I take my one damage, and I get the salvo back with a red and a black, which gives me a hit and a crit. Okay, I just take it. And then we're going to shoot out the side. How much health do you have left? I have three more. There's a hit. There's a hit, and I'm just going to take it, and because what the hey, let's just get rid of that salvo and try and do some more damage to your side. And that's three hits. I'm going to toss out my evade. Because you're a larger side, you can reroll both of them. All right. And I get an accuracy and a uh, hit and a crit. So I will toss out then. Well, this didn't go as planned. <laughs> um, we'll just take it. So we'll take that one on the side and then a damage, structural damage. That really turned out poorly for me. And then we're going to be going speed two. And this is why it's really poor for me. 
Um, You're going to ram me. And I'm going to ram you, and I'm going to stay right where I'm at. So yep. you can have a damage, and I just took their one, two, three, four, five, six damage on my turn. <laughs> what a joy. How much health do you have left? One. Of course. So we're going to activate the armed cruiser over here. I have a nav dial. I'm going to take it as the dial. I'm going to use the existing nav token to get rid of the raid. I still have a squadron raid. And I'm going to fire from my side to the side of your hard cell. We are at close range. So I get a black and a blue die. Let's see if I can't take this out. Two hits, John. Okay, I will toss my brace out and take one. Not quite. Uh, I don't have any other shots, so let's use the nav. I'm going to stay at speed two. And we're going to do the double crank on the second one here. Keep me in the fight a little bit. go. We're going to go with this, this guy, the one with still defense tokens. He's got a squadron. We're going to activate these two squadrons and they're both going to move right down here. Well, this one first. He's going to move down here and he's going to attempt to kill this acclimator. We get one red dice We'll see what happens. Nothing. Wow. And then we're going to do it with the other one as well. Right to here. And attempt again. There's the hit. Okay, I can't do anything with it. So that is the seventh hit. And that does remove the acclimator from the board. Yay. I also get rid of a rate token that way. Yes, the rate token is now gone. Yeah. And then we're going to make sure I don't have any other attacks. I do not. I am going speed one, and we're going to drop to speed zero with this, so then I'm not just playing bumper cars. We're going to activate the charger, navigate, use it as a dial. We're going to start with a forward shot. I have two reds and a blue at your hard cell in front of me. We are at close range, and you've got no defense tokens anyways, correct? Correct. So let's see what I get. I have three hits and an accuracy, so that should be enough to do at least one damage to you. Yep, and that's going to be a crit. What do we get? Shield failure. I don't have any shields, so you don't get any effect. Hmm. Yeah, that works. Leaving me at one health. So what I'm going to do over here is then flak at this squadron. My anti-squadron is black, so let's see if I can do one damage to you. Yes. One damage. Now I have to move. I'm going to increase to speed two. And I'm going to do one little jaunt over there, which will ram you. So that effectively has me going at speed one forward. So I will land here. and we both take one damage. I die. And I'm still alive. We're gonna activate Dooku's ship. He has long range obstructed into the side of the ship. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reveal in engineering and I have nothing to heal, so we're just gonna let it be. And then we're gonna take those shots. So two red, twice because of advanced gunner. Don't really have any other good options. And the dice continue to hate me already. Wow. And we're going to spend that concentrate fire just to attempt. Cool. Well, we know where the new red dice are going. The trash. <laughs> and then we're going to attack again. This has been a great way of I do shooting and then Ken does damage to me on my shots. Yeah, wouldn't that be hilarious if these guys had salvo? But I don't. So that is three damage. Um... Hmm. I'm going to spend out 
my redirect to push everything to the front, one, two, and then three on the side. Okay, and then it's down to movement. And we're going to do this. Just gonna nudge this guy slightly. And we're gonna go like that. And just move him. Like that. And this guy is kind of. Uh, Cool. Very good. So I've got one activation left. My armed cruiser, nav, I'm just going to take it as a token. I got a method to my madness here. Uh, I do have a front shot to your munificent, but I can't pass up an opportunity to take out a squadron because those tend to get me in the end. So anti squadron is two blue. Let's see if I can't take that out, and I'm well within range. Two hits. That is a dead vulture squatter. Boom. As I said, I'm moving speed one. I'm gonna double crank this and put myself right here, and I'm not overlapping anything. Here we go. The last munificent. It is revealing a squadron dial, so I can activate three. It just so happens I have three. So what I'm gonna do first is this guy is gonna jump up to here. Like that. And when I do that, I get to shoot at your guy right there. So that's gonna be a blue and a black. These dice, man. I want my old dice. And then we're going to add in a black. Wow. And then we're going to re-roll one That's for nothing. Hmm. And then we're going to activate this guy. And we're going to try to do a little bit better. There's two. I'm going to just keep threatening to melt them. And then we're going to add in a black. There we go. Three hits. Three. And we are not in range of axe. We're just outside of it. So I have to take three damage from five. That gets me to two. It would be nice if I could stay a little bit closer. Okay. And then the hell of chow la 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 jumps over here to be in range one of that ship. And there. And we're going to go ahead and attack that fighter. He has the same armament and the same AI. So here we go. He's gonna die. Yeah, so he's dead. Oh, so just one, two. That's that. Now we go into ship attacks. I have you out the front at medium, and I have you at the side at close. Not that it really matters. So we're gonna take the important one, the side one. I need two damage on three red dice to kill your ship. Yes. So, so, Clone Wars red dice are... <laughs> so I would never fly these ships if I made a list without LTT. And that's why. Because red dice are red dice. And... Okay, well after that display of awesomeness, we're gonna shoot the front into the front. Two reds and two blues. And you can't spend your redirect. No redirect, huh? We're at close range here? It doesn't really matter. With oh, you're right, evade. because the evade uh, rules have changed. So let's see, what do I really want you to do? I want you to re-roll that crit. Come to a hit. Well, that doesn't really help, and actually I could have just gotten rid of it to effect two, couldn't I? Oh well, we'll keep it. So, that's one. Oh, and uh, no, you don't have a crit, so that doesn't matter anymore. So two, and I take one damage, correct? No. Yes. Yes. Yes, because right. the crit Three. still goes there. Yes. And then we get to move. Where is the two? Mm 
and I ram you with this nifty little ram. Um, so I fall back here, and so I ram you. Yes. Then I fall back, and I can land there. So you're the one that I ram, and then I fall back on the station, healing that off. So let's. You wind up landing here. Okay, so you'll overlap him. So you'll take the damage. I take the damage. Yours gets healed. Correct. And then you get to place. Where did I just put this? No, button? you get to place. Right, because you overlapped it. And Axe gets to go. Hey, you have an open shield here. I like that. So he's going to go there. Okay. And that's the end of ships, on to squadrons. So I have four squadrons left to activate. All I'm really going to do here is get my squadrons to engage. So he's there on the asteroid, engaging all of them. He's going to engage a handful, actually. I think that gets all of them. The squadron I have here has the ability to hit the front of this Munificent. So let's take that shot. It's against the shield. So, one hit. And you take it. And Axe is going to fire also into the side, and he's going to try and do something here. He also gets a hit. Okay, I will redirect and I will salvo you. Okay. Red dice salvo. For nothing still. Start of turn four, Dooku's going to spend his last token off of his card and give all of your guys a nice raid of navigation. So I'm going to activate my arm cruiser here, which is in dire straits. I have a nav dial. I'm going to use it. I'm going to spend the previous token to get rid of that raid. So I've got a couple shots. I'm going to go my front to the front of this munificent and my side to the front of that munificent. So let's do the side to the front of your flagship. So that's a blue and a black. We are at close range. For two hits of crit. Cool. Uh, how many shields do I have on the front? You've got two. Okay, we will redirect and then we're going to... Uh... This is from the side? From my side to your front, yeah. Uh... We will actually brace it redirect it, and then sell you. Why not? Brace the two. And we'll just put both two right there, and then we'll do two shots into you. Okay. For two hits. Wow. And they're crits nonetheless. Correct. That's into your side, though. That's into the side, and I have the ability to just take them, actually. So, yeah, I'm going to just take both. So one, two, and front to front. So two blues and a black for three hits and you cannot salvo back. Okay. We will uh, brace it to two and redirect it both to the side. Okay. Now I'm gonna use the nav to kick up to speed two. And I believe I can just get by yep but you're gonna be able to hit my front I think out of your side John we're gonna activate beast of burden we got a navigate we're going to use it as the dial um, I think we're going to put to here, and we're going to spend my reader. We're going to spend my brace to refresh my munificence here's um, redirect. 
Then we're going to shoot the front of your ship with three reds at medium range. And long range. Looks like it's long. So here we go. Three reds. How many misses? There we go. There's four damage. Four damage. Two crits. So we are going to evade the double and I am going to redirect to the left side then. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to fire a red dice at the front of your acclimator. Okay. For a hit. I'm just gonna take it. Sorry, that's off screen. Messy. And then we're gonna move. Move this guy and then just hover it like a champ to right here. Landing on the station, healing one of the damages. So we're going to activate the charger, engineering. I'm going to use it. I get two engineering points. I'm going to put one shield up onto the side. And then I'm going to flak. So we took a look. We're close range, at a flak range with all three of John's fighters. This guy is double arced. And I'm going to flak out the side in the front. So let's do one hit against your uh, base. So that's a hit, but I'm assuming you're going to scatter. Uh, no, we'll just take one. Okay. And then I'm going to hit this guy for nothing. And attack him again. So now we're going to fire out the side and attack that guy again for one. And the other vulture also for one. We're going to move at speed two. Before you do, I'm going to shoot into your Ah, uh, yes, you get to shoot at me. That's right. Should have thrown the shield up in the front. Forgot about that. But it's but still it doesn't matter, because these dice are horrible. Okay. He goes over there. We're going to go with my guy way over here. He is revealing a navigate, because he's going speed zero. We're going to use it as a dial. We're going to dial it up full speed ahead and we will go speed one to there i'm gonna activate my armed cruiser a dial but i'm just going to use it to get rid of the squadron and the nav uh, raid tokens so i get no benefit from the command i can flack some squadrons oops as i knock your munificent all over the place john I can hit each one of these three, but all of them are obstructed. So I only get one blue die per. So let's start with the ace for a crit, which is a miss. The guy on two health is very accurate. And the final one is also accurate. So I did absolutely nothing with these blue dice. <sighs> so I'm going to move. I'm at speed two. And I think what I'm going to do is just try and stay out of the way. Put myself there. Okay, here we go with the Munificent. It is revealing squadrons. And we're going to reach out the back to grab these two squadrons. The first one's going to fly up into here, staying out of distance one to attempt to bomb into your front. For a double. Oh, wow, double. Um, man, all right. Uh, that'll kill me, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna spend the uh, evade and force you to reroll it. For an accuracy. Okay, that works. I like this new evade rule. And then we're gonna fly another one in and attempt to do the same thing. For it doesn't Don't do anything. Nope. 
Okay, and then we will activate this guy and shoot at your squadron there with a blue and a black for a hit and hit and then we'll put in another black and then we will swarm this one for three hits so three hits on which squadron is that guy over there and i don't have axe anywhere near so he has to take all three okay and then i don't really have that many shots so we'll do side into your front and we got three reds to attempt to do this damage. Basically I need three hits. Yeah. Or that actually does it that right there. That will do it, yeah. So three hits, I'm can't assuming redirect. I can't use the redirect. So that's one on the side and then Two, three is four, and that is a destroyed counselor ship. So you finally got it, Chen. Finally got it. And then for my next attack, we're going to, I guess there's really nothing else I can really hit. Flack out the front, because that's really the only thing I can do. So we'll flack that fighter for an accuracy. And then we're going to go ahead and move. And we will go right here. So my acclimator is all that's left. I have a nav. I'm going to spend the, to uh, the dial to get rid of all of the raid tokens. I have no shots, so I'm just going to move my speed to forward. John, if you don't mind. We have my munificent flagship as the last ship to activate. What's your dial? It is a navigate. We're going to take it as the dial. I have a long range, unobstructed shot from my side into your side, and I get to do it twice. Hmm. So hopefully I can bleed off tokens. You need two hits with six red dots. Yeah, plus all of your shenanigans. I don't have any of that. That's the charger, right? Yeah. Oh, he has no tokens. He's left? got. He's got a, a contain. You oh, should be able to kill this one. should be able to, able to do it. I'm looking at the wrong ship. Yeah. I'm like, you're gonna just discard everything. I should, but then again, this guy's rolled like zero damage twice. There's one. There's one. Okay, I can't do anything with it. So there's one. Yeah. <laughs> and then here we go. Second. Can we get another one damage? Oh, there's a double. There's a double. And, and an accuracy. Accuracy and a nothing. Okay, so that that will whew, that will kill this one. Jeez. Okay, now I have to actually figure out what I'm doing for a movement. I got the dial, so I think we're going to do this. And then overlap your squadron. I like that. The squadron's not been activated. I'm going to plop them down here so that I can bomb you. Okay, and then we go on to fighters. So let's get started with squadrons. I get to go first. We're going to activate this guy and try and kill this vulture that's at two. Let's see what I get. Uh, three hits. That's very dead. And then I'm going to activate this guy. And I think the only one that's in range... No, I can go after the guy with two here. So let's try and kill him, because no sense in going after a swarm. Only one. Oh, but I can swarm, so let's reroll that. Two. That kills another ball. Actually, I only have the one. Yep. Okay, we will just attack this guy. He's not engaged, so basically on a blue and a black, can I kill you? Yep, let's do it. Nope. Nope, but I take one. All right, let's go to the other side. I've got the opportunity for some bombing. Okay. 
So let's start with axe going to the rear. Actually, so I'm going to take, I'm going to take axe. We're going to attack the front of your heart cell. So that's a black. One. Take your shield down. I take it. And then this lonely V19 is going to try to bomb the side of your Munificent and gets one hit. Is there any shields there? Uh, there are no shields there. We will redirect to the front and we will salvo you. Okay. Go for it. This thing has been flapped, I think, twice and salvoed once already for a grand total of zero damage. Yep. And that is end of fighter phase. All right, so acclimator time. Now, if we're going to use a dial. So what you're going to see is I've got long range shots into the side, unobstructed to the uh, hard cell. And to the rear. And I want to try and hit it. So it is the, yeah, the objective ship. So I get two shots, three red dice on each, correct? Correct. So let's go to, what do you have for tokens on that? A brace and a redirect. All right, so let's do my front to your rear first. Okay. Four. Dice for, have been awesome today. For one damage. So what are you going to block uh, my redirect? I'm going to block the redirect. Cool. And then I take one. All right. Let's see what I get. Front to side. Oh, red dice are red dice. Uh, we're going to redirect that to the rear and uh, bam, be done with that. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Cool. Well, Solid. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Good talk. And then what, you're going to move two or do you yeah, want to jump up know, to three? Just, just, just move them here. Just, just it's just going to off the edge after that. Yeah, uh, um, like really good God. That's, that's So actually just, it does matter because you may or may not. Right? We're going to do a jig jog. So left, right. Just like that? Yeah. Cool. So before you can do any more pesky shots, this guy's gonna activate. He's got a squadron. He has one squadron, so we're gonna command one squadron to do something. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy right here and we're gonna fly him a little bit forward to right here. And we're gonna try to take out this guy on one health with a black and a blue and then add in yeah, I won't need to. You, you know, it. dice only cooperate when you there's don't one health. To. Yeah. But hey, there's a fighter. Then we're going to flak, blue, black, and I have both of these at close range. So we're going to start with the guy that's not the ace with a blue and a black. For two. And I am actually going to spend... Is that for all attacks or is that squadron attacks? For another friendly squadron distance one suffers damage during an attack. Cool. So I'm going to spend the brace to reduce that by one. So he still has to take one then, right? Correct. Okay, and then my next shot is going to be against your dude in front of me. For two. Go ahead and re-roll the blue one. For nothing, so one. Okay, and then we're moving and we're cruising at speed three, and we're gone. And we'll just go straight to there. All right, so here's what we got. I've got the counselor class Nav, we're going to use it. I'm going to flak. I've got one, one, and two dice to hit these vultures. So let's go after your ace with one for a hit. We'll scatter it. We're going to go after this vulture for one. Okay. So he has to take it. And then the guy over here at three for no hits. <laughs> of course. Yep. 
And we rotate that. Then I'm going to jump up to speed three. And we already pre-plotted this. We're just getting out of the way. We're going to activate this hard sell. He really doesn't have anything going on. He's going to do a nav. Take it as a token. Sweet. And then I'm going to flack this guy with a blue flack. For nothing. Mm -hmm. And then we move one. Zoom. We're going to go with the flagship and reveal a navigate. We're going to use it as the dial. Um, what we're going to also do is, and yeah, that's it. We're just going to double flag out the back is what I think we're going to do. So we're going to start with a red and a black against your squadron. Here we go for take one. Okay. Do it again. Yep, and then we're going to do it again. For one. Yeah, go ahead and re-roll the black one. For one. Yeah, I'll take the one. Leaving you at two. And then we're going to move. And we've already looked at this. I'm going to land here on this and we're going to drop the shields on this side by two. My last ship is this Munificence and it's got a squadron and I can just reach these two squadrons. So what we're going to do is this guy has no choice but to attack this guy. So we will. Not that I think I can kill him, but damage is damage. We're gonna roll that in, and then we're gonna roll in an additional black, and then we're going to swarm, swarm it for three damage. Well, you don't kill it, but that's more damage than you've done in some cases. Yeah, I know, it's sad. And then this guy is going to move to here, locking you down and attempting to kill you. You have a brace, so I need three damage. Mm -hmm. So here we go. A black and a blue, or, or and I need an accuracy. Yeah, not gonna happen, nope. but here we go. One damage. Nope, he takes the one. Leaving him at one damage, and then, so this is the all important shot, red dice to him. We're hit. All right, so he's dead. Right at the end, the red dice pulls it off, and then I can throw two against that guy, but it doesn't really matter unless you attack me and I sell it with you. So he takes zero. Man, that guy is invincible to flag. He really is. Yeah. And then we just jig jog it that way for me. Just gonna hang out over here. I mean, specifics doesn't matter anymore nope. at this point. All right. So here's what I'm gonna do with squadrons, because I'm the only one with squadrons left. We're gonna move him up. So Mr. Invincible, he's engaged with both of those guys, and we're just gonna try and kill the one vulture off here. Let's see what I get. It looks like you're going to need to swarm it. Um, swarm it and yeah. nothing. So, not dead. One health left. Yeah. And I believe looking at the total area, we're not going to be able to get into range of each other after this point. Um, so actually, do we just want to run up what would happen to squadrons? Yeah, let's just see what happens here with squadrons. Okay, so you would go, you're out of range of everything to command it. Yeah. I'm out of range to command it with that. But what I do have is I have flak that I would hit both of your squadrons with. Mm -hmm. And that would be a red dice against that guy and two, a black and a red against that guy. So let's go ahead and take that real fast. We'll attack this guy with a red and a black 
For nothing. Now we're gonna flack against this guy. For one. Yeah, that's one. And then we're gonna do my special ability with my uh, leader because of advanced gunnery, and we're gonna do it again. We're gonna attack him with a black and a red for one. And then we're gonna attack this guy with another red for nothing. And then we're gonna move. And we will just boop out of the way. Like that. Then my next ship is going to long range red flag both of them again. So the one on one health for hit dead. And then the one on three health, nothing. And with my nav and that, we're going to drop down to, uh, it doesn't matter. Well, it does because I can activate as if, if I'm in long range. So we do that. Hmm. So I can activate those two guys as if they're touching. Ah, uh, with the hyperwave? Yes. For the hyper... Hey, I've had, carried the card around the entire game, I'm so... Try and use it. it is your so, ship activation. So what I'm going to do for squadron activation, because I can't really do anything else, is this is going to wind up attacking the vulture. Yep. With, see if we can get some dice. No. No. All That's right. huge for me. That is, so... Then, on my turn, I use hyperwave. And what hyperwave means is I can use my AI at close to long range, which are those two guys. So here we go. We're going to activate the guy in one health for adding in a black dice, two damage. You are now at one. And then the other Hawthorne guy activating him as well. There we two. go. You there we it. go. And that's the end. All right, well, let's get to a wrap-up. We'll be back in a second. All right, so uh, final score... 249 for you, John. 82 for me. I thought I was going to get away with one or two of my cruisers. Yeah. 8-3. Uh, yes. Man, That's Clone Wars. I really like the Munificence, except for the fact that they're all red dice. Red dice. <laughs> and you can't roll red dice. I cannot. Um, all right, big takeaways from our first Clone Wars game. Defense tokens, I like what they've done. Yes. Uh, I'm already looking at Raiders being better, uh, those counselor class ships, the fact that I was able to kind of survive because of them. Defense token suite uh, for version 1.5 of rules, awesome. I love it. I agree. You did some turns with Salvo more damage to me yeah. than I did to you. Mm -hmm. Like the Beast of Burden just got wrecked. Yeah by that crit and everything yep. going through it. Um, and then being able to discard and evade is fantastic because mm -hmm. it just keeps you alive. Like I actually yep. do not want to play against Rebel Corvettes right now because they could do it twice. <laughs> like you just move in, you're like, uh, I'll cancel one, take two damage, throw it out, cancel two dice, maybe take another damage. Like they're going to be very survivable. Oh, and very much if so. it's at extreme range, then an onager is probably not going to touch it. No. Because that'll be three dice that it cancels. Which is a lot. Yes, so three no, dice yeah, is insane. That, that's half a shot. So no more one-shotting uh, with onagers at the beginning. I'm totally fine with that. Uh, so dice. Dice are a thing. And I think we said this in our overview of squadrons and things like that about the Republic. I do not like red dice in anti-squadron. It is just far too inconsistent. Mm -hmm. um, the one guy was a hero. I think I flapped him like four times yeah, before he, finally finally connecting it, with him. It us. was your final shot. Finally took that, that clone trip. I was hoping he would survive. It really <laughs> was. Because, uh, man, your munificence could not lay a finger on him. I think he did one damage in like three rounds of, of flacking at him. 
which was incredible. Um, all in all, I, I liked the Clone Wars stuff. Um, Two things. Yeah. Dooku screwed you. Yes, very much so. And your ship, Advanced Gunnery, was completely out of the game, the entire game, mm -hmm. because of not being able to turn in. Correct. And then, um, Advanced Gunnery is why I was able to kill things. Yeah, honestly, yeah. If so, we weren't playing Advanced Gunnery, I wouldn't have been able to kill all your squadrons, and I wouldn't have been able to just barely do enough damage through to kill your ship at the end there. So it is worth pointing out that, again, we pulled these lists direct out of the back of the Learn to Play book, and Advanced Gunnery was the objective that was you know, thrown on that. Um, I would not have chosen Advanced Gunnery with this particular configuration at all, because it, it makes the munificence way more powerful than they need to be. Yes. And those side shots with the three red dice are devastating. So from that perspective, we're going to put an asterisk on it, because this was <laughs> the learn to play. Yeah. Um, and I would never take a munificent, I think, without a linked no, turbo I, There's too many things that you need re-rolls for or extra tokens. And, you know, I liked Obi-Wan's ability. That was kind of neat, being able to knock out of damage. You that saved me a little bit. did use that very efficiently. Um, Clone Squadrons, I feel like it just needs something else, but maybe it's just the V-19s. So we're going to see with our next battle report what winds up coming out. Uh, but all in all, I, I enjoyed... These definitely feel different than Empire and Rebellion. Much so. Yes, they do. Uh, it's clear to me you want the clones to work together. You need kind of one ship to help another ship. And uh, even same thing probably with the squadrons. I think once the Jedi get out here, the squadrons are going to be the Jedis different. would be giving out counter, and they would yeah. be giving obstruction. So what, do I roll one dice and then... It, it'd make your rolling even worse than it was this game. Yes. Um, I really liked the uh, clone navigator. Yeah, that was really cool. Uh, that actually helped me out a little bit. Yes, it did. Uh, so, and all in all, I like how the clones play. Now, watching how the droids were playing, uh, they were really kind of geared up to just kill things by just throwing so much at you. Uh, and Dooku, talk about uh, really neat abilities. Uh, I knew what was coming, but I didn't know when. And that that worried me most of the entire game. And you played it great, John. I mean, that, that screwed me over pretty good. Yeah. The, the acclimators don't turn. No, no, they don't. You know, if you want to know what a victory at speed three is, take a look at an acclimator. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so acclimators, just use NAVs and hope you don't face Dooku. Yeah. Uh, and if you do, just speed one. That, that's your, your smartest bet there. Uh, oh, man. All in all, I had fun. This was a good first battle, but clearly, again, not the fleets we would have chosen. So stay tuned for our next battle report to see what we do put out on the table and see how the cold It's works. probably going to be munitions and squadrons. And link turbo laser towers. And link turbo laser tires will be there. And you might see bail. On, on my end. And Kraken, so I can just change the dice. Because, <laughs> cool. yeah. you know, it, when, when I finally get dice fixing, I won't need it. No, you won't. That, it's when you that's how it works. When you can't muck with your dice, that's John. When you, you need like three re-rolls to get the hits. Yep. So, so uh, Ken and I are going to be recording a bunch of games. We're really glad that we got these on. We have a bunch of social media links down below. Come give us a talk. If you want to see something particular, um, let us know. We're building a bunch of fleets right now. So uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give a thumbs up for the video if you enjoyed it. And then, uh, like John said, join us on the social media. All the links down below. This has been Clone Wars. I'm Ken. I'm John. And you've been watching I Am Radio.